uh, we've been on a talk called Kingdom Culture. Kingdom Culture. And uh, we're going to jump right into that again today. So uh, if you want to ch- get your Bibles out, we, uh, we believe the Word of God is life to us. We believe it is the source of life and strength. So we get excited when we open the Bible here at the Rhodes Church. So if, we, if you got your Bibles here, Mount Carmel, E. Rhodes family, wherever you're watching, get them out. Let's open them up to Matthew chapter 13. Woo! Matthew 13. Are you ready this morning? I got four people ready this morning. Is anybody else ready this morning? <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. So, all right, our vision is to connect you with Jesus. So we know that we're not the thing that's going to solve all of your problems, but we know the one who can. His name is Jesus. Kingdom culture. Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start reading in verse 44. I'm just going to read three verses, and then we'll get right into the uh, message. Are you ready? Here it says, verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let's pray. Jesus. We just thank you for your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bring it to life into our hearts today, that we will hear what you're trying to say. I pray for clarity of communication, clarity of understanding. God, that we will take away the the truths that will set us free. So, Lord, I thank you for confirming the word. I thank you for delivering the word, and we look to you and praise you. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. All right, Matthew 13, 44. Notice Jesus starts it out here. Again, this is Jesus speaking. We've been talking about the parables of the kingdom of heaven. Here's what it says. Again, the kingdom of heaven. Again, he says. The word again there just means repetition. Return back once more. Another time, I feel like there's people here that are saying again with the kingdom culture. Would you move on? Again. But now we know Jesus was not afraid to repeat something to make sure they got it. He was not trying to give them something new to impress them all the time. This is that move of giving something new, I guess. I'm not. <laughs> That's what Jesus did. When he gave something new, he always went like that. I have no idea what that means. Just move on. So anyway, he didn't mind saying stuff to drive home a point. So why are we still on kingdom culture? Because we're still trying to drive home the point of what Jesus was saying in Matthew chapter 13. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? Foundational principle, components of heaven, the system or culture of heaven, how heaven operates, how it flows, how it functions, how God runs his system in heaven. He says, hey, this is how we run it up here, and I want you to pray so it can be the same way down there. That's what Jesus said. So let's see what kingdom culture. So the kingdom culture or the kingdom system of heaven is like, what's it like? Here's what he says. It's like treasure hidden in a field. So the system of heaven, the culture of heaven, notice what it says. It's not like a treasure. It's like treasure hidden in a field. So it's like one thing. It's like a group. It's like, it's like a concept. It's, it's like an idea. So the system or kingdom of heaven is like an idea. It's, it's like a picture. He's making an analogy here. He says, the system of heaven is like Treasure hidden in a field. Okay, that's good. What do you mean? Let's see if we can figure out what he's saying. Hopefully this will speak to you. The word treasure here in this verse literally means this, a treasure box filled with valuable objects in it, wealth of great value laid up or stored in something. So when it says the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, treasure, think not treasure like treasure itself, but think treasure box. Or treasure chest. Got a picture of a treasure chest that you can see here. So this is what he's talking about. It's a treasure. The word they use is not for the valuable treasure. It's like for the box. I'm like, okay. So a treasure box or a chest. Because normally people don't bury valuable things just randomly. You're like, you usually put them in something and then bury it, right? If you got something valuable, you put it in a box or a chest or something. Maybe a, a time capsule. And you bury that, so the thing that you bury it in is not what's valuable, it's what's in what you buried it in. 
Tracking. Okay. So let me say it this way. A treasure box or a chest is not what's valuable, but the true treasure is what's inside the box. And we'll build something for you. And we'll build a case for you. So hang with me for just a moment. So the treasure box is only valuable as long as the treasure's in it, right? I mean, no one's fighting over that box, but people will kill for the treasure. So will they kill for the treasure box? Not really. They will kill for the treasure, but the box can think it's also for it. So a treasure can be in something. It can be contained by something, and that something not be the treasure. Let me say that again. Make sure you're grasping with me. So a treasure can be in something, it can be contained by something, and that something not be the treasure. And one more time. So a treasure can be in something, it can be contained by something, and that something still not be the treasure. All right. I like to make sure you get what I'm talking about. So let me give you some scripture for that. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. So we walking around as earthly treasure boxes get the presence of God, the glory of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit. We get a treasure in us. So the excellence of the power is not about the box, but it's about what's in the box. So it's not about you. Look to your neighbor and say, it's not about you. Some of you have been wanting to tell them that all day long. Well, you're welcome. So that we realize in the scripture that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Here's two things I take away from that. Number one, we're not the treasure. We're just the box. But number two, this is one that some people get tripped up on. The treasure is in us. This is where religion takes some people out. They leave the treasure in heaven and they forget that we have a treasure in earthen vessels. It doesn't say we have this treasure over earthen vessels. It doesn't say that. It says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Am I the treasure? No. But do I have a treasure? Yes. That's why you got to look at yourself. You got to stop looking at yourself like I'm nothing. Well, yeah, you're nothing. You're a box, but you have a treasure in you. You're a great box. Look at your neighbor and say, you're a great box. That's good. That's good. First Corinthians, First Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple or the box of the Holy Spirit who is where? In you. <laughs> whom you have from God and you are not your own. Luke 17. Verse 20 says, now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. It's within us. So we are the treasure box, yes, but we also have a treasure. Don't discredit the treasure on the inside of you just because you don't like your box. Just because my box isn't what I would like it to be, don't water down the treasure. <laughs> the treasure brings value to the box. The box doesn't devalue the treasure. <laughs> Woo! We want. <laughs> I just know when God's talking. I get excited like this because I know it's Him and it's not me. It's not the. It's not the box. The treasure's talking right now, so I get excited. <laughs> So we see, we, we want to water down the value of the treasure because of the box. But I'm telling you, nobody's looking at that box and saying, oh, that's a stupid looking box. They're looking at the treasure. They're going to bring me that, put it in a shoe box. I don't care. I just want the treasure. All right, let's, let's move on. So the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. Hidden in a field. Hidden. What does the word hidden mean? It means to conceal, hide, or keep secret, to make invisible so as not to be found. So we've got this treasure but it's hidden. So if it's hidden, does that speak of intentionality or accidental? Is it on purpose? If you hide something, is that on purpose or accident? 
It's on purpose, right? I mean, if you hide something, you're, you're doing it so that nobody will find it. You, you've got something and you want to put it somewhere where it's not obvious. And the Bible is saying here that the kingdom of heaven, the system of heaven, is like a treasure box that's hidden. And I'm like, Lord, why are you hiding it? Shouldn't everybody want to do it? Here's what I felt like the Lord was saying. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for your glory or for our glory. Here's what we need to understand. The wisdom of God, the kingdom of God is not hidden from us. It's hidden for us because God wants us to search for it. He wants us to seek him. Seek and you will find. So he says, knock and the door will be open. So there's, got to, there's a little bit of seeking. If you would just do a search in a concordance or something and look for seek or seeking, you will find all these ways that it's connected to seeking God. Why does he hide it? He doesn't hide it, keep it from you because he loves when you hunt for him. He loves when you search for him. He, he's, he'll even give you clues. Get warmer. Get warmer. He loves the hunt. He loves it. So you search him. He said, I'll give you another scripture later. Anyway, get excited about that part. So now it's hidden, but it's hidden for you, not from you. God's not hiding truth from you. He's hiding truth for you. You just may have to go digging for it. And you're not going to find it on your Twitter feed all the time. You're not going to find it on social media. You just got to keep looking. Keep looking. Here's where you look. The truths. Go digging. There's your treasure map right there. All right, so, let, so the man did two things. Once, it, once he found it, so which a man, I'm sorry, treasures, kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man did two things. He said he found it and he hid it. So he found it. What does he mean he found it? The word find here, just the general term definition for found is just means to learn the location of something either by intentional searching or accidental discovery. You know, sometimes we find things because we're really looking for them and sometimes we stumble across them. Have you ever found something that you really weren't looking for? You know, like you'd lost something and you didn't know where it was. And then all of a sudden later you're doing something else totally unrelated. And all of a sudden, boom, there it is. Yeah. Like where were you when I was looking for it? Maybe you even bought something to replace it. And then you found the one you lost. Yeah. It happens. So sometimes we find things that we're looking for. And sometimes we find things that we're not necessarily looking for. Sometimes you, you find socks, keys, love. Sometimes you can find love when you're not looking for it. Here's a, here's a little tip. I'm going to throw this in here. This is a little side road, but I'm going to come back and take a quick rest area break here. I found my wife when I wasn't looking for her. If you're a college age, adult, anywhere in between, teenager, whatever, I would encourage you, spend more time looking for the treasure. <laughs> and God will bring you your spouse. I wasn't looking for her, but boom, there she was. And she started stalking me. It was really awkward. I mean, it just happened. So anyway, <laughs> everybody's looking. She's not here. That's why I'm saying it. Keep it between us. She knows. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Love you, babe. Anyway, so now, he found it. Here's what, another definition of the word found. <laughs> it means to discover or to find after a search, to conclude after an investigation, to obtain for, listen to this, to obtain for oneself, to arrive at a particular state or condition. So what, what does that mean? It says, it's like a man who found it. He found it. I believe this word found means more like this. It doesn't just mean that he found or realized that the treasure exists, but now he went from finding a treasure, but he went to a place where it became, he found a personal treasure. In other words, it became a treasure to him. Like there's a treasure, but, yeah, but I found it. So it's not like somebody else has it and, and I know it exists or I know God exists. No, no. This is talking about a time where you, you find something for yourself. This is the difference in you knowing about God and you finding God. When you're waffling around and you're not really sure if you're going to go all in or not, usually it's because you haven't found him yet. Because once you find him like this is talking about, this is what it spoke to me, that when you find a treasure like that, it becomes your treasure and not somebody else's treasure. 
I'm not, I'm not curious about what did you find. I'm like, what did I find? Your relationship with Jesus is inspiring, but it won't change me. I can, I can give you all kinds of inspiration, but it won't change you until you find him. I can tell you about him. I can tell you how great he is. I can tell you stories. I can give you illustrations, give you testimonies. But until you find him, but once you find him, whoa, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, and now I see. I found him. It wasn't like he found me. It's like I found him. It's like from the standpoint, he already knew where I was. But I had to find the redemption. So this is what he's saying. I found it. I found it. So then he, after he found it, uh, Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. All right. Look at your neighbor and ask them, have you found him yet? Have you found him? Have you found him? Have you found him? So after he found him, what did he do? Then he hid it back. Like, dude, you just found the treasure. Why'd you hide it? You found it. Why'd you hide it? Because it wasn't his property. He found it on somebody else's land. He had to rehide it because he couldn't go into town going, hey, look at this treasure I found. They said, where'd you find that? Oh, oh, yes. What's that? You're trailing off there. Where'd you find it? Oh, it's over at Bob's place. Oh, well, then that treasure belongs to Bob. Right, so he rehid it because he, he wanted the treasure. So he's trying to keep it secret. Pretty crafty. So he hides it back. But look at this next part. He found and hid and for joy over it. Underline that part. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. And joy over it. I really meditate this part. Joy over that. The word joy just means cheerfulness, delight, great happiness. His delight and joy was over it. What's it represent? The treasure, the treasure box. So for the joy over what he found, this treasure gave him great joy. His gladness, his cheerfulness, all of it was attached to the, to the treasure. The treasure was now the source of this newfound joy. This treasure brought him joy. It brought him cheerfulness, brought him delight. He was excited about it. He was, he was pumped about it. The kingdom of heaven is about a joyful choice. I, notice what it does not say. It does not say, and for the right over it, he sold all he had. But it says, for the joy over it. Walk with me for just a moment. For the joy over it, the treasure, he sold everything he had to get it. So it wasn't for the right over it. Here's what I think. Too many people are trying to live for God for the right over it instead of for the joy over it. Because it's the right thing to do, because I don't want to go to hell, because my parents say it's the right thing to do, I really want to do this, but for the right of this, that will never get you into the kingdom of heaven. It's got to be for the joy over it. It's got to be when we're waffling back and forth, well, I kind of want to live like this. I kind of want to do my own thing. I kind of still want to sin, but you know, I don't want to go to hell. I mean, everybody wants to go to heaven, so I'm kind of back and forth. You haven't got the joy over it yet. When you have the joy over it, then everything else pales in comparison because my cheerful delight came from my treasure. It's like, man, the joy over this. Man, I can't compare it to that. It's like that stuff's a bunch of trash compared to the joy of what I found in the treasure. So if you're trying to serve God for the right over it, it will be discouraging. Because you'll feel like fun is always away from you. But joy is in Jesus. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So now let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. I could stay on that for a little bit, but I see times keeps on ticking, ticking, ticking. So he goes and sells all that he has. Sells all that, how much did he sell? No, 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 really. How much did he sell? I mean, he got rid of some extra stuff he didn't want. I mean, he went to the storage building and got rid of some junk that he didn't really need anyway. Right? Isn't that what it says? Cleared out the storage unit. Isn't that what it says right there? He sells how much? How much is all? <laughs> all. Sells all that he has. Evidently, the price of the field is high enough that he had to sell everything he currently owns in order to purchase it. 
Here's what Luke 14, 28 says. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the, what does it say? Count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Everything he had in his possession was not worth what he was getting with the treasure. Here's what we need to remember as followers of Jesus. It will cost you everything. Amen. Amen. Let's go. That's usually not the cheery speech we give. Usually we talk about, listen, God will give you this, he'll give you this, give you this, and this, this, this. Don't you want to serve him? We don't talk about what's going to come out of here. We talk about what's going to go in here. Oh, I've done gone, done gone the wrong direction. It will cost us everything. <laughs> then I don't want it. Then you haven't found the joy of the treasure yet. When we find the joy of the treasure, I'm like, man, I'll give up everything for that. Why? Because nothing compares. Let me, I'll explain a little bit further. Let me give you another picture of it. So now, he went, mm, mm, mm. <sighs> come on, Lord. He sells all that he has and buys which field? Let me try it again. Maybe you're not looking at the screen yet or your Bibles. He sells all that he has and buys which field? Okay, got 25% over here. So he goes, sells all that he has, and buys which field? Okay, we've got a few more in here. Let's try to get the whole room together. Watch the online. Help them out here. He sells all that he has and buys which field? Why that field? Why not any other field? Dude, this, this is an agricultural society, right? So they own fields. Fields represent occupation or income. So, I mean, it was this person had fields that supported him. So he had other means, but he was willing to sell all that he had to buy that field. Why that field? Because that field is where he found... You guys are getting it. That field contained... The treasure. So now here, here could be the conundrum. Well, I found a treasure in this field, but, but, here's what the enemy will do. Yeah, but, how do you know there aren't other fields with other treasures? How do you know that there aren't bigger treasures in other fields? How do we apply that today? Great question. Have you ever... Went up to someone that was maybe going into college or going into certain education, maybe into a career path, and you, they get this question, what field are you going into? Right. What area of medicine or what field, what field are you going to go into? So if this field represents his occupation and what he does for a living, he was willing to sell all other fields to buy the field that the treasure was in. Mm. So here's what God asked me. He said, Chad, why are you spending time and energy and effort working in fields with no treasure? I know, I was looking for a place to hide too. But I'm just, he's like, tell, tell my people that the only field that matters is the field that the treasure is in. We can have all kinds of fields that will provide an income. Other fields would provide an income for him, crops and harvest. But they did not have the treasure. But when you get into the field that has the treasure, you will not only have provision and income, but you'll also have the most important thing, and that's the treasure. The treasure is Jesus. So this is what God is saying in this parable. He's saying, listen, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. So it's like, I'm going to put my secrets, my, my system, my culture, what I want for you, I'm going to hide it in a field, and I want you to come dig it up. And you got to be willing to sell everything else to go after that one field. I don't know what field you're in. Some of you may be dealing with this question, well, does my field not have a treasure? I don't know. What if I'm in the wrong field? I knew it didn't have a treasure in it. I don't know. I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm not trying to get you to quit your career and change tomorrow. 
I'm just saying that God is saying to us as we pursue things in this world, we've got to pursue the treasure more than the field. Because two things are important about this parable. Number one, number one, he bought the field, but was the field the treasure? No. So whatever your career is, even if the treasure is in it, don't get it twisted. Your treasure is not your field. Your occupation is not your treasure. The second thing, the treasure box is not the treasure. So the box represents us, my own abilities, my own skill set, my own thinking, my own, my own talents. I am not the treasure. The treasure is in me. So two parts to that that God's wanting to bring home to us. Number one, don't ever think that your field is the most important thing, your occupation. The treasure is the most important thing. And number two, don't ever get it twisted to think you are the treasure. Don't think you're the one that has to bring home the bacon and fry it in a pan. Jehovah Jireh, my God, will provide. Right? How silly would it be for the donkey that Jesus is riding into Jerusalem? They're laying down blankets, waving palm branches, Hosanna, Hosanna. How silly would it be for the donkey to go, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's right. Dude, it's not about you. Mr. Donkey, I hate to burst your bubble, but you're the box. There's a treasure that's hidden. God wants us to find it. It may cost us everything, but oh, buddy. I I didn't get to it, so I'm just going to read this, and then we'll close. Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls. Wait a minute, wait a minute. If it's a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, pearls, plural, does that mean that he probably already has a bunch of pearls? He collects pearls, he works, he buys and sells pearls. But who, when he had found how many pearls? One pearl of great price, price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. You can have a lot of pearls, a lot of valuable things. But there's that one. There's the one pearl. And this is what I believe God wants to get across in the message today. There's one field that has a treasure in it. There's one pearl that's worth giving up all the other pearls that you've got. I got a lot of valuable things. I got a a lot of things I could do with my life. You know, I went, got my degree in accounting, and I thought that was a great field. There's nothing wrong with accountants. If your treasure's in it, knock it out. But when I went digging in my field for 12 years, had had some crops grow up that were supplying need for my family, but I kept digging for treasure. I couldn't find it. Others around me in the accounting field loving it, God blessing them, their wonderful treasure, but I couldn't find my treasure. My personal treasure wasn't there. Somebody asked me this last week. We talked in this conversation and, and it came to us. said, what? So what in the world brought you to Norris City? I said, good question. My treasure I'm not from here. I would have moved here on a dare. <laughs> Just being honest. I was talking to some good friends the other day that, that growing up, I did not like them at all from North City. Now they're some of my best friends. I came here not for the field. There was plenty of other fields that I was dreaming about. Oh, put me in that field, Lord. Put me in that field. Oh, if I could move into that field, Jesus. But he brought me here for a treasure. We hope you enjoyed this message today and that you connected with Jesus. If this message has changed your life and you accepted Jesus as your Savior, you can text the word new life to the number 618-243-0900. We would love to celebrate with you.
If you would like to give to the ministry of The Roads Church, visit our website www.theroads.church for all of our giving options. We would also like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notifications of our Sunday live services and to discover more of Pastor Chad's teachings. And now we pray that you experience God's presence throughout your day.